I'm Gina Mizell here with Connor Letourneau. We are at Folsom Field in Boulder where on Saturday afternoon Oregon State squeaked by Colorado 36-31 here and this was a game that was kind of strange. Oregon State there was up 14 to nothing. You thought this might be a blowout. Then they were up by double digits in the fourth quarter and you thought they had pulled away but Colorado scores a late touchdown, has a chance with about two minutes left but the uh, Oregon State defense came up big and the offense did, did just enough. Definitely. I think that there were a lot of takeaways from this game. It wasn't a beautiful win. There were a lot, a, lot of, a lot of things to clean up. But, you know, some positives to take away. The run game got going when it needed. The yards per carry was solid. Uh, you know, you, you were just talking about how they were going for it, you know, with the run game on third and third and three, which is something they weren't doing a year ago. Mm -hmm. So we got to see the strides there. There's also a lot of strides made, I thought, in the passing game. The tight ends really emerged after a pretty – Pretty horrible uh, performance against USC. They they were yeah. what we expected from them from the, the start of the season. Sean Manning kind of found a groove, um, and also defensively they they limited Nelson Spruce, which was kind of the big game plan factor entering the game. The Colorado found other guys open, but that was definitely a key to, to pulling out the win. Yeah, an interesting thing about the defense is first half not very pretty. Lots of missed tackles, lots of bad angles, missed assignments, just those types of fundamental things. Um, and then really tightened up early in the, the third quarter and in the second half and then kind of let Colorado back into it, but really clamped down there on, on that last drive and sealed the win. Definitely. And so I guess the question here is where do they go from here? Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> well, again, where Oregon State goes from here is they have their second bye week. It's sort of a not a traditional bye week because they play on Thursday, October 16th against Utah. And this team now is 4-1. and one. This is probably their best win of the year. I don't know what that says about this program at this point. But again, they're 4-1 and one with their only loss at USC last week. They're, they're two wins away from bowl eligibility. Obviously, plenty more on the schedule. W what is the, the next step for this team? What does this team need to do in order to uh, you know keep keep the, the good momentum going as, as they continue through the Pac-12 schedule? Well, I think one one key thing is going to be finding more consistency in that offense. I thought mm -hmm. they made strides today, but there were still a lot of factors that need improving. I think that they need more production out of their receiving core. Mm -hmm. They need Bolden to be more of a deep threat and to be more of a playmaker for them. And then also defensively, they need to uh, you know just limit those big plays and and uh, be more consistent. As cliche as it sounds, they yeah. just need. It seems like today for, I th thought it was a perfect microcosm because they were good, they were bad, they were good. And it seems <laughs> like most games have been like that. They need to string together a full game. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned Victor Bolden. He was back. He started. Obviously missed the last game and a half or so with a dislocated pinky. He didn't do much in the first half, but you could kind of see him come along. He made some key catches. Um, you know, how encouraging was that to see him kind of come along, maybe as the game went along? I think it, it was definitely. Encouraging. It was also encouraging just to see the way other guys took took the slack when it seemed like he wasn't maybe ready to, to make much of an impact early, early in that game. I know Mannion targeted him a couple times and it didn't work out early, but it was nice to see him come on late. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, Oregon State is off next Saturday and then plays Utah at home on Thursday night, October 16th. So we're still going to be working. We've still got stories to come out, but this is the last game here for about 10 days. So for Connor Letourneau, I'm Gina Mizell. Again, final score here, 36-31. Oregon State beats Colorado in Boulder, moves to 4-1 on the season. Keep it right here on Oregon Live and read the Oregonian every day, and we'll catch you next time.